So in Ireland, it takes a lot longer. So I like to flip stuff. The fastest you can really ever flip out and from buy to rehab it to sell it. You can do that in 18 months, man. Holy you crap. Let's we'll just say it takes nine months to rehab it. Well, no, I'm talking about a four-month rehab. <laughs> if it takes nine months, it's a, it's a two-year thing. Dude, that's eight insane. Months. Because it takes that long to close. <laughs> Today we have Aaron. Don't forget the O, Flaherty. That means you fought. That means the family fought in the war. Uh, we have a really special guest from Dublin, Ireland. Uh, it's our first international guest, and he's got a incredible story. I mean, from a very very young age, he was able to turn uh, five thousand dollars, a very little amount of money, into multi millions by the age of twenty six. And, um, you know, his story between starting off into brokerage, getting into real estate investing is is super unique. So real pleasure, real honor to have you on the show today, Aaron. Thanks, guys. Welcome aboard. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having Aaron. me. Appreciate it. Aaron O. Flaherty. Yeah. O. Flaherty. So, so that really means you fought, the O means you fought in the war? I heard it off someone before and I just took it on. You've just been going with it? Yeah, I just roll with it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds pretty cool, right? It, it really does. does. It really does. I actually think it's always my granddad, shout out. My granddad actually told me that oh. because his surname was uh, Kelly, but there's Kelly and O. Kelly. Ah. So oh. I think that's what it was. You know, it's a classic Irish thing that was probably told drunk some night somewhere and it just, <laughs> it grew legs and went with it, but here we are. Everybody with the O is like, yeah, we fought in the war. Yeah. Everybody without is like, shut up. <laughs> People changing the names and all back yeah. there, you know. Yeah. So, um, Aaron, can you give us a little background, who you are, what you do, your story? Yeah, sweet, yeah. Thanks for having me again. Um, uh, my name's Aaron O'Flaherty. I'm 28 years old. Um, live and breathe real estate, which is cool. Um, so I started as a, an estate agent or a real estate broker at uh, 17, 18. Uh, just right at the bottom doing rentals. So I would have done like rentals and like multifamilies, like studios, small one bed apartments. Uh, it would have been like the lower end of the market and stuff. And I uh, did that for a few years and then moved into sales. I uh, would have done like investment stuff. So I would have sold uh, some big blocks of apartments, purpose built stuff. I kind of enjoyed that. But I suppose throughout the whole process, I, I, I couldn't get ahead. Uh, probably had shiny object syndrome as well. Mm. Uh, so it's like the more I earned, the more I spent. Yeah. So probably from the outside, it was like, damn, <laughs> you know, yeah. he's, uh, he's uh, killing uh, it. But I, I, I couldn't ever gain any sort of wealth or, or, or what I would know now is like equity. Mm. Uh, and as a result, I had no time. Mm. I, I actually couldn't do what I wanted to do. And I was I was caught in the trap then, earn money, spend money, earn money. Uh, in Ireland as well, if, if you're an employee as a tax structure, it just doesn't work mm. because the tax rate's so high on personal income. So for a real estate broker, you could do big numbers, uh, but commissions are lower because it's salary and commission. So it's really, really hard to get ahead, you know. Um, then I, I bought my first property. Uh, it was a small single that house. I knew it was worth like 325 330 And I remember seeing it up for 200 and it didn't need that much work. Mm. Uh, bought it, like re rehabbed it like on a major budget, man. Like I knocked out the money, like because I was living this lifestyle. Yeah. I had a Mercedes, but I knocked out money for a kitchen and floors. That's the truth, wow. like you know. That's where I was at. But the car was worth like thirty five, <laughs> on finance. You know the suit, right? I'd knock out fifteen, fifteen grand to do up this house, like you know. So, uh, but then I started to realize this is where I'm going wrong. Wow. This is where I'm going wrong. Mm. Got that deal done, uh, flipped it. Took like a hundred, hundred and twenty off the table, and I was like, "Okay, now this is this, this is what I was, this is what I can do." Um, immediately rolled that money into another one that was a three-story building. There was much more uplift in it. So I paid like, is in that for like four twenty, four thirty? Sold that for like seven thirty. Wow. So then I cashed up again. Then I bought a, a block of six apartments. I doubled my money on that, and then I started rolling that into then uh, buy and hold stuff to create that kind of cash flow element to allow me to. Randomly come to New York and do a podcast with nice. you guys, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, so that's it. it uh, that I, I hate sometimes explaining that because it's like step one, step two, step three. I forgot to leave out that it was hell in the middle of that raising private money for the first time. Uh, you know, a two year loan, real basic. Eighteen months in, 
the guy blows his toys out of the pram, tries to take me out of the game. You know, that type of stuff. You know, how do you deal with that if you don't know? You just got to deal with it. It's a, I remember listening to you said something before. You don't know the answer to everything, but you know someone who does. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, when you said that on the pod, I was like, damn, I just get that. Yeah. It's just like, I don't have the answer to everything. But when your back's up against the wall, man, you better figure you better it out. Better figure it out. You fucking, you know, so punch in the face. You guys talk about that as well. I was annihilated through all that. My first rehab, you know, that went upside down on the building. The electrician came in, rewired the fucking place wrong. I had to get it rewired again, like stuff like that. And then understanding how cash flow works. You go for an employee to have them banks, money, cash flow, builders, money in, money out. Mm -hmm. You got to learn that stuff the hard way, you know. So that's it. It's been a, it's been a good road. And now here we are. It's um, it's been eleven years since you you got in the business. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, shit. I never looked at it like that. Yeah. That, that's crazy. I'm I'm waiting to hit the decade mark. Uh, how the hell did you get started at seventeen years old? Yeah, that's <coughs> really young. It's an interesting story, actually. My dad's a, a military, um, and and he's kind of hard up, you know, mm. which is probably like the greatest thing you could have, right? So we weren't babied, and he he would have held me accountable and stuff. And uh, I I was kind of finishing up in school. I wasn't school wasn't for me. I was like, oh, this is like a waste of time. I, I want to get into like doing business or whatever, but I didn't know. And uh, I remember actually I was working at a computer store and uh, I was kind of messing around. I was like buying like cars and stuff and just kind of fluting around. But for him, he was like, no, this is like bullshit. I remember he was like, you need to get yourself a proper job. Oh. Uh, and for me, that was real estate. And uh, I rang a guy uh, in like a local real estate office, like literally in my city. And uh, he put me in touch with someone else. And I went and met that guy. And I actually told him, I said, I'll work for you for free because I knew if I got into real estate, I could do something. I didn't really know what, but I felt like I could fucking do something here. Yeah. I remember watching Million Dollar Listens with Ryan Serhan. <laughs> I was like, I could do that. <laughs> and it looks really cool as well. And then you see the commission, you're like, I forgot, you know. Yeah. So uh, uh, he gave me a job, Noel Clark, great guy. And I worked under him for two years. Um, and that was kind of my start. That's how I got in. Mm. Uh, but quick, surely but surely, then I started to realize, okay, if you want to make money in Ireland anyway in real estate, you got to own the real estate. Mm. You must own the buildings, you know. Is it is it? <coughs> how much do you know about uh, U.S. real estate? I, I'd be above average on for someone who doesn't live here. Okay, so like, what what are some of the big key differences between? Yeah. U.S. and and besides the commission structure, it sounds like. Yeah, the commission structure is entirely different. So in, in Ireland, you work on a salary with minimal commission. Um, you would generally work for one guy, like real estate teams. Mm -hmm. um, hard to kind of break out into your own unless you set up your own business. You got bricks and mortar. You got all that stuff that comes with it. Uh, conveyancing. You know, if, if you buy a simple deal in Ireland, it's going to take a minimum of eight weeks. That's a simple house on a road, no finance, no one crazy. Like a cash deal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm talking like the most straightforward one. Hi. You're looking at eight weeks. Just the conveyancing process takes a lot longer. Huh. Solicitors take their time. Um, like no digital records or something? I don't know. Evan's kind of hard copy. There's always going to be something missing. Huh. Quick queries. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing a... Uh, we just closed... Uh, we closed set 19 units this week. Nice. Which was awesome. Congrats. And uh, two of those buildings that make up the 19, we we're waiting over 12 months. Wow. 12 months to get those closed. So that's, that's normal. Wait, wait, wait. There wasn't any like... Title issues. Yeah, there was. Yeah, okay. That, that, that's, but like nothing out of the ordinary. Title wise, it was relatively fine. It was probate. Ah, uh, it was a probate deal. Probate deal, yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, man. Well, probate finished up in May. <laughs> 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 so you can probate all you want. I'm Holy like, what? Shit, dude. <laughs> yeah. The probate was done in May. <laughs> it's the game, huh? It just, it takes a lot longer. Wow. So uh, I like to flip stuff, get some cash off the table, keep it going. Yeah. The, the the fastest you can really ever flip out and from buy to rehab it to sell it. Like two years. You can do that in 18 months, man. Holy you are, crap. You are nailing it. Well, 18 it. months? Well, because we'll just say it takes nine months to rehab it. Well, no, I'm talking about a four-month rehab. <laughs> <laughs> if it takes nine months, it's a, it's a two-year thing. Dude, that's eight insane. Months. Because it takes that long to close. Yeah, they were like, we, if, you, if we buy a place... Let's say 16 weeks it takes to get it bought. And like the bank I use are quick. We're hard money, man. Hard money lenders. They're like, yeah, go. So it's not the bank either. Is there a lot of those over there? There's a lot of... No. In, no. Le in relation to lending, you're talking maybe 
maximum of four kind of hard lenders, two yeah. bridge, two bridgers, four or five kind of five year long term guys. Um, our banking is very very weak. Hmm. Options. Are, that's why I like I heard your guys on the phone there. They sound great. Like those guys. That sound awesome. But I was like, God. Okay. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> if I had one of them ringing me, I'd be like, what's up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Three God. week closing. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you so much for the call, brother. <laughs> I'm on my way. You know, so it's the complete opposite. Wow. We're ringing those guys. We're hounding those guys. Trying wow. to put deals together and stuff. We're driving it. The fact that your guys are calling out, having good conversations, that's awesome. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm. That's crazy. I mean, does that... Is that is that an advantage then? Like, if you're one of the people that gets it and knows how to do it, I, I, I could see that being an advantage or a disadvantage, I guess, depending how you look. Because over here, it's I don't know what it's like in Ireland, but it's like the hot thing, right? Like, flip houses, get make money in real estate, get rich quick. There's a, everybody's a hard money lender. <laughs> everybody does, you know. So there's a lot of competition. Hundred percent. I built that company. We, but my my trading company, the forefront, which we advertise as the brokerage. So we're just trying to. I started to realize myself that I had no education, no college degree, nothing like that. But I also started to realize that, okay, I didn't need it either. Mm. And that, you know, when I was in school, I was like, Aaron's not good at this, Aaron's not good at that. But I'm a little kid, man. You can't, you can't say that to a kid. Then they, 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 it becomes habitual. They start to believe, maybe I'm not able for the world. Right. Yeah. Real estate gave me an opportunity to prove to myself that, oh, no, I can live the way I want. Wow. I can express myself. I can do deals. I can meet people. Like, look where I am now with you guys. That's thanks to real estate. Mm. Yeah. That's awesome. I would never got that opportunity. So with the brokerage, we try to explain to people that we, t- we cut the bullshit out of real estate, man. You know, there's these nine-second TikTok videos and people think, ah, <laughs> that's what I've been doing wrong all along. He's got to buy his house. Go do one and come back to me, you know. So I built a brokerage where we, we bring it to people and we educate them on the, on the, on the truth and the false. Mm. And I show my scars and I show everything. And we've had great results with these guys out buying real estate and stuff. But like not, you know, you know if you only get rich in three weeks, we haven't got a product for you. Right. But if you want to build long term wealth, enjoy yourself, give back, uh, you know, and, and and help your family and people around you, hang out with us for two, three, four years, and we got something cool for you. Wow. you know, that's the way we say it, like you know. Um, that's great. I, if I knew how to get rich quick, I'd just do it myself. <laughs> 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 Fuck yeah. yeah, once you figure that one out, let me know. <laughs> yeah, I'll Please. call you guys straight away. <laughs> well, what is it? It's 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 the get not it's not get rich quick. It's get rich for sure, right? That's what they say about real estate. I guess in Ireland, it's great. Get rich for sure a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah. Like, you can do it fast. You, yeah. can, you know, you can do it fast. So I, I rolled up pretty quick. I went from kind of nothing to, to you know, uh, something uh, quite fast. But I went all in. Mm. I didn't have, a, like, a plan B. I had, I had a couple of different ways to do plan A, but I went all in. But, you know, when you break it down, what is it? You raise some cash. Mm-hmm. You get a bank on board. You understand real estate to the point where that's garbage because it's worth that when I fix it up. And you rinse and repeat. And try and stay in the game in the middle of it. What do you um? How many units do you own now? Um, so I kind of buy, sell, buy, yeah. sell. So I think at the minute now we're holding about uh, like thirty six, thirty seven. Fantastic. Um, nice. just sold off, uh, three plus three, plus two, and then six before that. So, um, buy, refurb, hold for like two years, flog it. But now we uh, we bought uh, seventeen this week, and uh, about what, fi- what was that term you just flog it? Flog it, yeah. What does that mean? Well, flog it. Buy it, fix it up, move it. Flog it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> flog it. That's yeah. hilarious. Um, everybody that comes on the show has scars, like yeah. battle scars. And yeah. it sounds like you're no different. No. Take us through, I mean, I want to hear the transition from you're, you're the real estate broker, and, and to me, that's like, I guess it's kind of the employee thing. Like, you got... You know, the white picket fence type thing. You could probably get the nice car. You look good, you know, but you're living paycheck to pay- paycheck, oh, yeah. and you're like, this isn't it. And then you want to make that switch. I would love to hear that mindset shift. And then also, like, I'm sure when when that happened, you you had some trials and tribulations. You're, you're second-guessing, like, maybe I should have just stuck with what I was doing. Yeah. I suppose the big thing was, um, the, the big thing, what you said about the mind shift, mind shift, you know the way on the internet to like just believe in yourself. I d- I don't think that's really the truth, you know, because I I kind of look at it in the way where I always say to lads, you know, don't believe in yourself, believe in the world, and if the world can do it for someone else, it could do it for you too. Mm. Oh. And I always believe that we're all naked every morning in the shower. You know, everyone, 
I presume you showered this morning naked, right? Absolutely. There you go. So Super we're all naked. <laughs> like extra naked. <laughs> extra I, naked. Well, I got no hair. You know, so I definitely. <laughs> so that's I'm the, a dolphin. Yeah. I look at it from that point of view. I'm like, you know, just believe it. Believe that it can do it for someone else. It can do it for you too. No, that's really good. But for me, when I was, my, my, my big one with this with the scars and stuff, that first deal, when I look back, it was rather be straightforward. The second one was where the money was. Mm. And I knew that thing was worth seven, seven fifty, and I was buying it for three. Wow. Uh, there was a twist on it. There was like, this was wrong, that was wrong. There was a tenant not paying rent in the commercial. She was living upstairs. The old classic, she had full control. I was like, okay, there's about 400 minus costs in rehab. If I can go in and fix that, there's 300 grand. That's all I could see. I needed to get there, and I hadn't got the money. The bank were coming in. I was like 120 short. Game on. And then that, but then that brought the scars. That was like the hardest. That was like four months, uh, four months trying to raise that money. 120 grand. Yeah. That was your second deal ever. Yeah, four months. Oh, dude, tell me about how miserable that was. Uh, <laughs> look, you know, uh, during it, it was actually it was quite bleak. Uh, the I had a guy lined up for the money. That was all good. And once again, I had no experience doing this. I didn't know what the red flags were. Looking back, I'm like, damn. <laughs> like, you know. like, come on. Looking I back, know. if someone yeah. tries to play like that now, I'm like, no, I'm okay, man, thanks. Mm. I'll move on to someone else. But I didn't know. All I knew was this guy had it. I might be able to get it. I'm going to get it. Right. I'm hammering, I'm hammering, I'm hammering. And like one week before, I pulled out. No. I had a contract signed, so no. 10%. Yeah, so that's all my money, like, right? So I, I'm, a, I'm not... What were the red flags? <sighs> well, if it takes four months to get 120, it's a huge red flag. Right. What I look for now in someone is, hey, look, hey man, are you interested in this? Yeah, hundred percent. Let's do it. It shouldn't take longer than seven days. Okay, there's some back and forth, right? Yeah, send me the wire. But the yeah. info's the info. Yeah, you know, and it's one twenty. It's small money now, right? Yeah. At the time, it was everything. So I hung in there for four months. I'm like, thank you, <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much. But you know what? I remember during as well. I knew I was like, I'm getting my ass beaten here. Yeah. But just keep staying there. Wow. Just fucking stay in, man. Because I get this one break. I knew that building would lead to another one, and that's all I needed. You know, and my solicitor as well, stay in there. He was telling me, stay in there. But, like, we got we got, we got, got beaten, and then we eventually got it and got the deal done, and then we're in mid-rehab, and then he closed in on the loan. Like, so, not only did I get the fucking thing over the line, I'm mid-rehab, three-story build, never Wait, been. your guy backed out. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah. Your guy backed out. Backed out, but then backed in again. Oh, he came back? Night before. What? <laughs> Like, come on. What is this guy just, put, like, just wants to... Did he just, did he, like, take you for an extra couple bucks or something? Uh, no. He just wanted to make you power. go crazy. I think it was power, man. Power play, man. Mm. Because, you know, you know you know what I'm talking about, the level of wealth some of these guys have. 120? Come on. It's not about the money, right? Mm. It's got nothing to do with the money. I can see that now. Wow. Yeah. So, if I compare it to if I'm helping, like, a, a few people have maybe came to me, Aaron, could you help? Yeah, sure, sure man. And uh, I, but uh, the same day, I just fucking send the money. If it, you know, I'd never send something that's gonna detrimentally have an impact on me. But if it's something that I don't mind, like if I don't get this back in the meantime, it's cool. Yeah. So I compare it to that. I'm like, what was the issue? But I didn't understand. So I'm in there like, ah, <laughs> you know, please hit me again. <laughs> 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 please just send me w like I was getting like guys. Like, I'll show you after the pod. Emails are like six, seven, like insane. But but I had no option. It was too late. Wait, was it? No. Lack of experience. Right. Mm. If I had the experience, it would have went boom. I could have even like rang David or you guys. You got experience with this stuff. Here, can I ask you a question? Yeah. My network was limited, man. I was in the... You didn't know. I, was, I didn't know. But now that I come out of it, come out of it now, when my, my guys come to me, I do a module on private lending. And I'm like, look out for this. Look out for this. Mm. And they're like, but. I'm like, no buts. Yeah. That is the requirement. And a few guys have been like, man, remember you said that? Shit, that, that, that's happened. I'm like, get out of there. Yeah. Say, thanks so much. Appreciate your time, but it's not for me. Yeah. So so we got the loan the night before. I'm like, yeah, game on, game on. Nice. Mid rehab, he pulled it. He gave me 30 days to pay it back. What? We couldn't do it. But we got it done. But like, it's battle scars. I was in London. How did you get it done? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jeez. I was in London. Uh, my mentor, Gareth, who just joined CG2. Get out of here. Oh, so you better not win that competition. I'm taking home that Mexico trip. <laughs> I'm taking home that Mexico trip. I got $2,000. We'll split that, Eric. Don't worry. Well, I got <laughs> a referral. <laughs> oh, go, don't worry. I'm coming. I think I'm going to get like $10,000 in, in commissions from CG. What is it for uh, referrals? referrals? Yeah. I'm a, I'm, don't do it. I'm going to win that bad boy. 
I got a whole list of 60 people I'm calling. No way. I made it. I, I, I time block 30 minutes every week just to make introductions. No. I'm winning that thing, dude. Are you, you're on CG, no? I'm in CG. Yeah. Uh, he goes most of the time. I didn't see it at the last yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He Eric, goes most of the time. Eric lets me be the, the prom queen over there. Yeah, yeah. He runs He runs the show. Right? <laughs> he goes in small. Yeah, he just goes. He, he goes into. He has a, he has a bunch of different uh, masterminds that he goes to. And this this one's, this one's. Nice. Uh, yeah, mine. But anyway, you're in London. You got a mentor, Garrett. Yeah. So the guy pulled the loan the day before. I was where was I? I was in Paris, and then I was getting the p- train from Paris to London. I was just doing a little trip. Um, we're coming like near the end of that rehab, kind of a couple of weeks away, and I kind of needed a break, so I was over there. And then the loan got pulled, which is like yeah, thirty day. You called it in, you know what that means, right? Call yeah. It in. Yeah, but you can loan. just do it. He could just do that. Full, full There's full. no term. Well, you can make up something, man. Like yeah. these, these guys always have something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just a. It was a. It was like a heavy yeah. hitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a loan shark. This guy's guy. a lawyer as well, right? Okay. <laughs> Fucking yeah. Oh my god. So that, I, but 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 it was like what 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 I was there a reason? Yeah, I, I, you know what the specific I can't remember was something insane. Yeah, he's just like whatever. Wants his money back. Like, yeah, I think he actually genuinely had the power to be like call in. Yep. Um. So th- so that was it anyway. So I'm walking around London trying to figure a solution, mm. and uh, there was one guy. I remember talking to this one guy like two three months before. Never met him. Spoke to him. A friend put me in touch. He was in real estate, but like not in a big way. Like really cool guy. Whatever. I just picked up the phone. I was like, "Hey, man, can I just explain the situation to you? Explain the whole thing to him." Well, and 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 it w- you guys spoke about authenticity, right? Yeah. I just told him what was going on. Mm. But then, where well, I told him what I was looking to do as well, and the reason why I was calling him, and why I was doing all this in the first place, anyway, I told him what my goals were, what my dreams were, and what I wanted to do. And uh, there's no joke. Three hours later, you wired the money. Get no, out of here. Plus what? interest to get rid of the other guy. Get out of here. And I'm still with that guy today. That's Yo, it. Tell, tell me what you said to him. Uh, well, what is your your goals? What is the reason? Well, like, what are those things? I'm just looking to do better in life. Yeah. Uh, if I'm if I'm being perfectly honest with you, I, I thought I wanted more money mm. until I got more money, and I was like, "Damn, that's not doing it for me." Mm. <laughs> you know the kind of way. So I I want to just improve my life and do a little bit better. I suppose for me, it is probably a thing with the education system where I didn't go that way. I went the entrepreneurial route, and for me, it's been an opportunity to be able to express myself, meet people. Uh, uh, you know what, what I want is the power of choice. I want time. I always explain to people in the simplest form. God forbid I ever have kids. I want to be able to drop them to school. I want to be at the football m- football match screaming. Yeah. I want that freedom, that time. N- money won't bring that, but m- but money will allow me to free myself and create the life that I want. Amen. And that is what I want. And then, you know, be able to support. We support some kind of charities and small organizations back home. And I just really enjoy that, you know. So if I can keep going with the real estate, enjoy that process, enjoy our work there and the creative element of it, it allows me to do that. And I've proven that. I've been on 20, 20 trips this year, traveling around. Wow. You know, it was a, it was a year of travel. She's like, she's <laughs> like yo, <laughs> we, we chilling, dog. <laughs> That's amazing, dude. Congratulations. 20 trips is a lot. That's a lot of trips. This year was a year of traveling. Wow. So what was the best place you went to? Yeah. Um, Tell me about that. You know where I was, right? And it was actually such a good trip. I went to Istanbul, Turkey. At the end of January. Oh, you got oh, a pair of balls on you. Damn. You know what? <laughs> I had a layover in Istanbul. What an airport. What an airport. Oh, you, you the best airport I've ever seen in my life. I, I swear s- to God. Yeah, Istanbul. I got Istanbul. It was insane. It was insane. I was like, I think I need to come back here. I didn't, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to. <laughs> you know. What happened in Istanbul that you said, wow. Man, it's just crazy. It's, I heard it's great. You've never seen a place like this. Yeah, it, I was, uh, it's like lawless. Lawless? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I was going for it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> it's reckless. Like <laughs> <coughs> They're loose. It's like laws and stuff like that's kind of non-existent. You kind of do as you please. A little bit chaotic. Really? That's cool. I, I remember my taxi dude from the airport. I was like, slow down. He was like, ah. I was like, slow down. He's like, smoking a cigarette in the car. It's like, they just don't care. They don't care. give a shit. They just don't give a Dude, you know what's it's weird, cool. man? I saw I was on Instagram. Actually, actually, I'm just a little drunk right now. But <laughs> I thought I saw <laughs> that Irish whiskey. I thought I saw like there was it, it was like the Devil City, Istanbul. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. 
It will be a pretty. I've heard. Yeah. Sorry. I've heard very good things about Istanbul. I heard it was, it's just like, I, I've never heard about like the cultural, like how crazy it is, but I saw, I, I follow these like Christian like oh. Instagram mm. uh, uh, accounts and it was like, this is the devil city because mm. of like some like historical thing and then the yeah. and in the Bible. Really? Wild, huh? Yeah, it's, it's uh, it must be crazy over there. It's chaos, yeah, yeah. It's of all the markets, mm. so all the streets are like. I don't know how, many, how people fit down the street, but you kind of just got to go with it. What is like a day in life over there in Istanbul? Um, just like busy and jam packed and markets, and it was cold when we were there. Like it was, huh. like the wind was cold. Um, but we just kind of tipped around, kind of. You don't drink, you told me. No. What do you do? Like, you, <laughs> what do you, like you know, you know what I noticed about you is you, you are very authentic. Like you are you. Yeah. Like a hundred percent. And like I feel like just on this podcast, we just met, but I know you. I feel like I Appreciate know you. It. And that's I I I feel like that has to have something to do with your, your success. And it sounds like with that guy too, for sure. Yeah. So I had some challenging times in life too. Mm. Uh so uh, I made a decision back in twenty twenty that me and alcohol would no longer be friends. Oh, man. Um so wow. good so for you. And it's funny when you come over to America, everyone's like, Yee haw! Like, I'm like, oh, <laughs> cool, man. You want a shot of whiskey, brother? Come yeah. on. <laughs> So I had to I had to let some things go too, so to be able to find Aaron, I had to kind of strip off somebody outside, mm. um, you know the kind of way. And uh, I, I I I remember figuring out one time I said uh, it's much easier to to, uh, to be myself because I don't have to be anything. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I, I think as human beings, it's just so much out there on Instagram and oh, oh God, that I have to be this person, I have to be that person. When 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 really, a lot of people are actually afraid to live as themselves. Yeah, mm. do you know, and and the unfortunate reality is, if you're not yourself, no one will ever get to meet you. Do you know the kind of way? Like we could end up not liking each other, but at least we know. Yeah, yeah. but it just happens to be I do like you guys because you're being yourself as well. You I know? love that. That's profound. You That's know? really good. I, I I I have a hard time with that personally because I'm a chameleon. Like if I go if I go in front of, of like a white client. Like a like a stand up typical Caucasian, <laughs> I'm like, "Hello, sir. Mm. Well, how you doing today?" That's sales, though. And, and, and like, mean. but and then I grew up. I went up in corporate America. I'm just so proper, you know. And then I meet with a uh, with like um, you know, a brother, and I'm like, "What what's going on with that?" You know, I'll, I'll grab a cigarette, but you got a lighter, and I'll smoke it, with, and I'll just be whoever the crowd is. And I just wasn't. I found myself not being authentically myself. Yeah. And it wasn't t until this year I was like, you know what? I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'm just going to be me wherever I go. It does not matter. And let me tell you, I, it, this is, it, it, you're just so much happier. People yeah. respect you more. You make more money. Uh, and uh, that's, that, that's really, I, I, I got to ask you a question, Aaron. So, gotta, so you're doing this education business. And, um, and, and you're recruiting, I'm sure, young, hungry, talent, talented brokers, realtors that want to join your company. Yep. By the way, the name of your company is really cool. The Broker, right? The Brokerage. The, the brokerage. brokerage. I don't like what? putting names. I, I really like Leverage. Co I think that's awesome. The Brokerage is, is cool, though. Really? Yeah, I like that. The Brokerage yeah. is good. It's a little bit on Irish. Everything in Ireland's like, oh, Flaherty's real estate. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, God, don't put the family name up there. You know what I mean? My mom, my mom and dad would be like, get that off. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's fucking crazy. So, so like, just clean, open. We can branch out. We can start doing brokering. We can start doing some landing stuff like that. So right. That sounds really cool. So what, it, like, you got these young guys coming in. And, like, dude, I, I, I've always been mentoring. Because, like, if it wasn't for the mentors in my life, who was willing to give their time to me. Yes, and just and just help me out, I, I really would have been so lost. I wouldn't have gotten anywhere. And so whenever I see a kid that that puts his hand down, has his hand down and says, hey, like, I want to do this, I always, every Saturday, dude, I got, like, two calls with, with a mentor, a mentee, every single, every single week. And um, I always give him, like, it's always that, like, I always say there's, like, 60% of the people just are lambs, like, just sheep. Yes. They just will never figure out that there is something better, right? And then there's like that 39% that see they have they see the vision, they have the goals, they know the dreams and they want more for themselves for the same reasons we all do, right? And then but they never take that massive 
fucking action, right? It's that 1% that, that differentiates you from the boys to the men, the ones that are willing to go to Starbucks on Saturday, yes, sir. right? Stick it out. Everyone's at a, at, a, at a birthday brunch, drinking, smoking, and you're there being like the weird guy at 22 years old while everyone else is, is having fun, right? But you're willing to put in the extra work. You get out of work, you're 9 to 5, you eat dinner, you work out, you come back home, and then you're on your computer busting your ass, learning, reading, doing the extra work till 1 o'clock in the morning, yeah. right? Instead of listening to music, Wiz Khalifa, I don't even listen to music anymore. I listen to Christian music. I wish I wasn't so so uh, <laughs> so sinful, but uh, but I do, right? Um, Where's this oh, going? I, I, I don't know. This, I heard this, Wiz Khalifa. The, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. In in on the drives in, right? You're you're listening. You're 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 listening to podcasts. You're yeah. reading a book, right? It's that extra effort that makes that one percent actually succeed. So, like, I'm sure you have so many mentees, right? You have so many people coming to your brokerage. What do you tell, like, how, like, how, what do you tell them yeah, sure. to, to elevate to the next level? Yeah, so one, th one thing I stopped doing is I stopped selling our courses and our programs. Because the moment I have to sell what we do to someone who wants what we have is the moment it loses everything that they're there for in the first place. Mm. Because... We're not, you know, we, 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 we don't necessarily advertise, hey, look, you know, do this and we'll give you that. Uh, kind of word of mouth, Instagram. And people come, but I ask people first question on the, on the call, what do you want? And they're like, oh, I, I want to get to real estate. I'm like, no, 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 you don't. What do you want? Uh, more money. I'm like, no, that's not what you want here. What do you want? And we all, everyone, mm. no matter who they are, male, female, whatever you are, um, they all want freedom and a pair of shorts. Uh, that's the big thing we have with everyone coming in. Mm. Um, so for me to get people to that point, we then offer what we have as a solution. But in relation to people pulling the trigger, but the unfortunate reality is um, some people won't. Um, what I see with my guys is the guys who succeed versus the guys who don't pull the trigger. The guys who succeed generally have a little bit more frustration, more pain, they're being a little bit more hard up. And there's maybe something to prove. Mm. Uh, I know with me anyway, it's just fear of failure. Yep. I'm just scared of my life. Yeah. Oh, I'm fucking terrified, man. Yeah. You know, um, absolutely terrified of failure. Um, absolutely terrified of going broke. Mm. And I try to get as honest as I can about my stuff with the guys. And then you start seeing maybe the body language changes a little bit on the chair. And they're like, yeah, yeah, and, and me too. And if you can get the me too's going in the room and the identification... I start to realize the guys that we're all here to do the same thing. I kind of drive them up that way. And then what we do is we lay out the plan. But the worst thing you can do is start throwing information at people. Mm. Because if someone doesn't know what they want, information is not going to get there. Right. You can't bring external stuff in to figure out the internal. I go in with my guys. Wow. I'm like, what is it in you? What happened? What's going on? Nice. You know, I've, got w w I've got one guy there at the minute. And I could see straight away, first time I met him, I was like, this kid wants it, but he just doesn't know it just yet, what it is. Mm. We had to dig in. And we went in and found that pain. Wow. We identified where it came from. Mm. I was like, now what do you want for your life? He was like, that's what I want, Aaron. Like, you want that freedom. You want to be able to prove it. Prove it to yourself. Prove it to you, you know. So let's go and do it. And then, then, then it's lock and load. We find a simple product that we advise all our guys to buy. We show them the funding model. We support them. 12 of them long programs. And the guys just start hammering out the deals, man. And then it gets tricky in between, right? So then we have to go back in and remind them why you're doing this in the first place. Because everyone, oh, I want to get rich in real estate, man. But, but, but it's not like that. It's going to come a time where your why is so important. Yeah. What do you actually want for your life? Hell yeah. You know? What do you actually want? And then when you know what you want, you'll also remove people who aren't fitting to what you want. Right. Makes everything more straightforward. You, you you do that right? I do that in my one. I have guys crying on my one on one sometimes. Yeah, sure, me too, man. Right? Honestly, yeah. I go, why? They go, oh, I want this. I said, but why? <laughs> yeah. And they go, this and this. I said, but brother, why? Why do you want that, right? And then they start telling you, and then they're like, you see the emotion, the pow, and the more emotion that they have, the more power that they have because there's pain there, right? And when with that pain comes a reason for being. There's a reason to solve a bigger issue. There's a reason beyond yourself, right? There's someone to take care of. There's 
people that you want to support. There is a community that you want to change. Um, what was that for you? Because a motherfucker that changes other people's lives has a powerful past. Yeah. <laughs> my whole, my whole, uh, I, I don't, I don't play the blame game. Man. I lift my head, <laughs> I lift my head, my head high and I'm very grateful for all the opportunities, good and bad in my life. So it's not a blame game, but when I was in school, I was told I wasn't good enough. Mm. You know, Aaron's this, Aaron's that, Aaron's that. Aaron's not nothing. Aaron's 11 years old. He's a human being. He's really, really good at some things, sports and stuff. Boom. Great communicator, great energy in the class. I was a messer. Mm. Yeah, so what? So what? I've no interest in that. So don't put me down and remove me from the classroom. Mm. I'm, I'm no different to any of the other kids. Some people can regurgitate information. Maybe I can't, but maybe you haven't put something in front of me that I'm interested in again. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So the whole education system and then that would have had an impact at home as well. Yeah. My parents were awesome. My parents were in real estate too. Um, and, and they would have dealt with some challenges. So I suppose to answer your question, really, the, 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 the recession hit very hard in Ireland, 2008, 2009. Mm. My parents would have been very heavily impacted by that. I would have been at that age where you start to realize and understand things. Mm. That had, a, ter- that had a, a, a heavy enough impact on me. And I started to realize how your t- life circumstances can change literally overnight. And uh, how money is relatively important for some things. Um, and that developed like a pain thing in me. And it was at that time as well when I was in school and I wasn't performing at all. And p- the teachers were kind of hammering down on me. You're, not, you're never going to make it. I mm. remember telling the teacher I want to be a bricklayer in Canada because they were paying $100,000 for Irish people to go out and be bricklayers. <laughs> and I was like, I'll just do that. That's $100,000, like 80,000 euros. Sure, that's double the high salary here. What's the problem? Wow. That's where I was kind of thinking, but I was not good enough. You're not good enough. You're not going to make anything yourself. Mm. And I just remember thinking, I was like, who is anyone else to tell me that? This yep. is my life. And my dad, my dad, no edu- no like education. Left school like 13, 14. Uh, military guy, started buying some houses, did great for himself. I was like, I could just do that, right? No, no, you can't do that. Why? Why not? Because mm. we, as human beings, we can do what we want. So I had that internal pain. And then I found a way to kind of express that. Do you know? Um... And when I started seeing the results, I was like, my God, I, 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 I now have to go and pass this on to other people. And I says, let's build a company around it. Mm. Uh, you know, and then I says, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll build a company. We'll start talking about it. And if people are interested, they might join us. And on we go. We started with three guys. Then the next program, we were up to 12. Another 10, another 10. I think people like what we do because we're just honest. You know? Wow. I love that. I appreciate the transparency there, man. And congratulations. Yeah, Yeah, it's amazing. I feel like everybody in this room has had that, right? Like the 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 teachers that are Mm. that are like, uh, you know, you never come out to anything. Yeah. But but what is it like? Looking back, it's so crazy that we're taking advice from people making like a little bit above minimum wage that are all miserable mostly. I was I had a couple good teachers. I did, I did. I had a couple really good teachers. But a lot of them were just miserable. Yeah. Like, making no money. And that's who's raising our youth. It's pretty ba- It's pretty sad, if you think about it. Yeah, I had some great teachers as well. Some really cool people. Yeah. But uh, it was like they knew their role as a teacher. Yeah. And then I had some other guys who felt like a, a, a power play. Yeah. You know? And I would have been, I would have answered back, no problem. Like, I, like you know, they don't speak to me like that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, And then when I got into real estate... I started meeting my real educators, you know, these guys who were doing deals. I was meeting other people, entrepreneurs. I know I'm 20 years of age, renting apartments for like 60-year-old multimillionaire guy. And those guys are educating me, you know. And then I met my mentor, Gareth, and then we flicked the switch. We just turned the blinds open. And I went from employee to entrepreneur, mm. and off we went. Because that guy had similar pain to me, and he'd done it. And he identified with me. And that's what I needed. So I believe as, as individuals, anyone watching this podcast, there is simply someone out there who's been through what you've been through. Mm. I know it seems like hell. I've been there. You're in it. One, there's a way out too. There's someone who's not only got out, but done unbelievable from getting out. Just keep your head up. You're going to find that person. If you can't find them, ask everyone around you, who is that guy that puts you in touch? Absolutely. And welcome to the world, baby. Rock and load. I love that, brother. I love that. Listen, um, because you are the blueprint guy, Right, like you, you people come to you and say, "Hey, Aaron, how do I, how do I get, how do I get financial freedom? How do I earn in a big way?" Um, what kind of advice would you give to someone that that wants to do this? 
Like buy real estate? Yeah. Is, is that the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, yeah, get, get in the Either game. Either buy real estate or become an entrepreneur or become successful in general yeah. and break out of the mold and do their own thing. And It's a value play. You know, it's a value play. You can't sell a product unless anyone knows about the product or knows what value the product provides. So if you look at, I'll, I'll just explain the two types of value I provide and someone might be able to identify. I provide value to people through education. What we charge for the education, they make like 20x on that. Right. There's value, right? right? We give them experience, we charge for it. That's cool. In relation to the property, I provide value on, we pay the bank interest, it makes them money. We pay private investors, we pay them interest. That makes them money. So I provide value in those areas. If someone is out there, whether they have a product or a service or whatever it is, you need to get it to the point where people want it. So you need to prove the value. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So I'll give you, I'm, I'm working with a guy at the minute. I'm going to uh, buy a piece of his company. He does like the reels. <laughs> the guy makes reels. But it's really cool. And it's a cool space. So I'm like, here, what, let me buy some of this. Let me help you with it. Get some new equipment, ramp it up. And I said to him, I go, look, for the next two months, I just gave him some money. I was like, that'll cover you for the next two months. For the next two months, just go reach out to these people and give them free reels. He's like, what? I'm like, your employee mindset is scared as fuck because Christmas is coming up and you want to buy presents. There's some money. I shouldn't have given it, but there you go. You don't worry about money. Let me worry about that. Go identify top 10 guys in fitness, PTs, all that. Tell them I'm coming to your gym. What day suits? Two o'clock, boom, I'll be there. And video reels and give them to them and let them post them and watch the phone ring back. Because these guys, you can't just, you got to provide them value and then they're going to pay for it. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Really good. So if anyone's out there, if you've got a product, service, an idea, whatever it is, find a way to give it away for free. Give it away for free. Give it away for free. Grow your audience. Wow. Then people will want it and you just turn the gas on. Everyone's trying to charge and sell stuff. Stop selling me, please. <laughs> give me some value and I'll just buy like crazy off you. You get me? That's great. Dude, I love that. That's great. Yeah. I, was, I, li- I listened to this podcast this morning from OZ. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and he's talking about selling. But he's like... You could be terrible at sales, but if you're convicted in what you're selling, mm-hmm. then you're going to sell. You could be a one at sales, one out of ten. But if you know, he's, so then he uses an example. He said, you could go back to your, your, your previous self ten years ago and said, buy Bitcoin, right? <laughs> but you can't tell them who you are, why, where you came from, but you want this person to buy Bitcoin or Tesla or whatever it is, right? He's like, how often would you follow up with that guy, with, with yourself, to make sure that you bought the Bitcoin? A million times because you'd be convicted. Like, if you buy Bitcoin, it's going to go up, right? Or Tesla or whatever it is. And it's the conviction, right, that you know what you're selling is good or that you, you have what you said, value. You right? need, if any, dude, this is, that's freaking great advice. If you're listening to this podcast, if you're, if you're watching this, you need to take Aaron's advice just now and you need to take Eric's advice because this, that is absolute freaking bombs. I, last thing I'll say, right, and that this guy was like, oh, but man, we got we, we, we got to get paid. I'm like, we don't get paid no more, man. We're entrepreneurs. We provide value in companies. Right. And uh, I said, wow. <laughs> I would say to people, I, I said, I was, so, you got to start giving your product away for free. They're like, what about the money? I'm like, well, you haven't got any, so what are you worried about? <laughs> and, and people laugh. I'm like, you're worried about money, but you haven't got any. Yeah. So I'm telling you to give it away for free, and now you're worried again. What's the difference? No money, no money. One will work. The other one... So if you haven't got money, stop worrying about it. Yeah. Go yeah. ask family member for ten grand, pay you back in like four or five years, and just there's your <laughs> spending money for the next four months. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, but you got to make the move. I was afraid. Like, yeah. Like, you know, and you don't gotta get rid of that car, man. Seven hundred bucks, man. You curved the wheel. It's, it was cool the day you bought it, but just give it back. Get the payment back. Get a backpack. Hang out in Starbucks, man. Provide free value for six months. Watch your whole life change, man. But no one's willing to wait. Everyone wants the money. Yep. Yeah. Give me the money quick. <laughs> if you find a way to get quick money, call me. <laughs> you got to call King Kong, man. That's yeah. right. King Kong figured that one Give out. Give me the money. <laughs> <laughs> That's Aaron. awesome. Aaron, brother, I love you, man. Thank you so much. Gosh, thanks so if, much for having me. If the people want to find you, the people want to reach you, what's the best way to get in contact? Uh, Instagram, Aaron FLA, or check us out at thebrokerage.ie. Amen. The brokerage. What? The brokerage.ie. I-E. On Instagram. Dot I-E. That's our dot com. Oh, okay. The Ireland the brokerage. Com. So good. So good. Brother, awesome. Awesome, awesome advice. So Great avenue, bro. You too, man. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.